Hi everybody, this is Big Anklevich and Rich Outfield. Yeah, and we're doing a remote show today. We uh, are in the car on our drive toward Las Vegas for the New Media Expo. I don't know how the quality of this recording is going to be. Basically, we are using the built-in microphone on my Samsung Galaxy tablet to uh, record this. Unfortunately, maybe I'm just retarded and don't know how it works, but I haven't been able to figure out a good way to get a decent mic hooked up to this thing, unfortunately, so we've got to use the built-in. So hopefully it sounds okay. It's Hopefully it's listenable. I did record a podcast this way already and put it out just on my blog, my own little personal blog cast thing that I called the Ankle Cast. If you haven't checked that out and you seriously have nothing better to do, then you could go over there and, and give that a listen if you wanted. It won't hit iTunes still for a while because I think you have to have like five episodes and I'm on one. So, yeah. But that's something that you're planning on doing several episodes of. It's something that I was hoping to do eh, once a week or so. I mean, I, I got nothing else to do. I got 45 minutes each way on my commute. So I figured I'd just once a week or so have that roll in and do maybe a 20 minute thing where I talk about how things are going on, etc. Well, what prompted that? Your very first episode was the first day of the new year. Did that have something to do with it? Uh, sort of. For the most part, I'd been thinking about it for a little while before then. The, the real prompt of it probably would be that you were telling me how you would sometimes uh, use your, your cell phone and record yourself talking about story ideas or things like that when you drive home from my house or when you're out driving around and stuff like that. And so I thought, huh, maybe I should do that. So I started recording myself trying to plan stories and stuff like that so that I could get writing. And in the process of doing this, I thought, I wonder if this kind of stuff would be interesting for people to listen to. It, it took like a month before I finally thought, you know, okay, maybe it's worth it to try it. And I actually did it on January 1st because I had something that I could talk about, which was, okay, we got the new year and what am I going to do going forward from that? Okay, and in that ankle cast, is it okay if we just sort of recap what you said in it for this? Sure. In that ankle cast, you said, okay, here are a couple of goals that I've set for the new year. And I'm putting them out there in a public forum so that there's a tiny bit more, res- not responsibility, what's the word? Accountability. You know, other people have heard me say this. When you say, hey, you know what? I'm going to ask Marianne to the dance. When you say that to the mirror, it's one thing, but when you say it in front of your whole class, everybody is going to be after you saying, so what'd she say? What, you didn't ask her? What's wrong with you? Right? Right. Yeah, that's kind of one of the things that I was going for. I don't know how many people actually look at my blog and see what I have to say. I know there's a few, though. I get comments here and there, so there's some people that check it out and might be uh, able to say, hey, you said you were going to do this, you need to get on it because I'm waiting for it, I want to see it. Does that help you when people do that? Oh, it totally does, yeah. When I have something like that, like kind of a, uh, shoot, I would say 90% of my stories got written because of an onus on my head, you know what I mean? I've had to get this done for whatever, be it the Broken Mirror Story Contest or, you know, pre-Broken Mirror times when you and I just uh, did our first Broken Mirror thing where, you know, that was the first one. I sent you the idea, hey, why don't we both write a story about this? And then I proceeded to do nothing. And then you sent me your finished story. (laughs) And that made me feel guilty enough that I actually put in the time to write the story. So, you know, that kind of stuff really helps me to go. Yeah, it helps me too. And that particular story, because I knew you were writing one, it's not really a competition, but it was sort of a friendly, I don't know what it was. It was something we were both doing. That put that one higher up on my priorities list than it would have normally been had I just come up with an idea for a story myself. And, And As far as writing goes, I know everybody is different, but we had Abby over recently, and she seemed really, I don't want to say surprised, I'm going to say impressed at the the number of stories or story ideas that I come up with or that we come up with because she's a novelist, you know? She was talking about that she has a certain number 
of novels that she wants to write, but she's not going to get to them all because there's not enough time in the day or in her life. But because we write short stories, I mean, you could write them all, is what she says. And for me, I've found that only one in five is ever going to get written for me because of the way my brain works. Uh, it, it sort of is an ADD kind of thing. It sort of is a, it just has a short attention span and a, or, or it's easily distracted by something else. And it's like, oh, this is what I want to write. And then if I didn't do it, my brain's like, oh, you know what? I'm Ian. I don't care about that anymore. I'm thinking about this. <laughs> yeah, one in a hundred for me, not because of the way my brain works, but because of the way I don't work. <laughs> But the thing with the recording of the stories, ideas, or things that I have in mind onto my MP3 player is that you never know when inspiration is going to strike, and you never even know if it's good inspiration or if it's not going to go anywhere or whatever. But because of the weird way that my mind works, or, or maybe doesn't work is better, I won't remember. There's, there's only room enough for so many ideas, apparently, and if the idea doesn't get used, it gets pushed away and supplanted by a newer idea. So this recording of the, uh, oh, I was thinking about a, a story today where, where there's a man and a woman, and, and somehow they're fated to be together, and they meet in a, in a restaurant or a mall or a Times Square in, in New York or something like that, and they don't know where they know each other from, but they somehow he knows that he's supposed to be with her and somehow she knows that she's supposed to be with him but how why what what could this mean and you spend the rest of the story telling their relationship and, and you know and then until finally we find out the truth of, of what you know is going on and it's like oh shoot you know this isn't what we were hoping it was anyhow that's that's an idea that i have right now but two weeks from now i won't remember that idea but if i've recorded it which you have um, right now. Yeah, that's a good point. I have these files. I have hundreds of these files now. And I can just listen to one and be like, holy cow, I had a beginning, a middle, and an end for the story right there. And I have no memory of where I was when I recorded this or even how long it was. But wow, that it's, it's, it's almost like somebody has given me a free story, but the person was me. So I'm not stealing from anybody. Yeah, plagiarism from Pastorish. Yeah, you never do know when your idea is going to hit. You know, so I, at one place that I used to get a lot of ideas, I would just go out and go on walks and let my mind wander, and I would, you know, think on stories a lot then. And that still kind of works. One of my most recent ideas that I got was when I was out jogging, which I don't get as much as when I would walk. Like, walking, I guess, is relaxing enough, whereas jogging is not. Jogging is painful and rough and and you have to concentrate on where you step right and make sure you don't run out in front of traffic or something like that and so my mind doesn't wander as much i, I probably just focus on oh this sucks my legs hurt ow ow you know that kind of thing i don't know <laughs> but i don't get very many ideas usually when i'm out jogging but this is one of the few that i have gotten i guess i probably don't jog enough really to start saying oh yeah i don't i get ideas jogging because I only keep it up for a short while, and then I take a month-long hiatus or something. But, uh, yeah, I got an idea recently while jogging, and that was one of the things that I did with this tablet before I actually did the first ankle cast, is I made sure to record myself dictating that idea off so that I didn't forget it later. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's handy. And uh, now I've, I've started a podcast. The one thing that I've made sure that I'm going to do with it is... It's not going to be a lot of effort. It's going to be me talking, and everything is staying in. I am not going to edit it. I will throw it in and try and sweeten the sound as much as possible, but I'm not going to edit it out, remove this or that from it. I'll just, I guess, try and edit myself in my head before I actually say it out loud. That's the deal with that. Well, see, we edit our show, and I've listened to other podcasts where they don't. They don't edit the show. It's just, you know, it's like a radio thing. It's almost live. It's pseudo-live. And I wonder, would we put out a lot more episodes if we didn't edit? If we just re-recorded it, tomorrow it hits the air. Well, we'd put out more That Gets My Goats. The problem with that happening otherwise is that our show also includes a story that has to be edited. There's no not editing a story. Well, I guess there, there may be some shows out there that do that. But they don't even edit their stories and they leave the parts where they screw up in. 
Although I think some of that is just not done on purpose. <laughs> just sloppy. Well, and yeah, the sloppiness. Like, okay, if anybody is listening to this right now, it has been edited. And do you appreciate that? Because we've only got one microphone. Well, it's not even a microphone. We've got one device. And when one person wants to talk, he raises his hand and it gets passed back and forth. And if, if there was a second and a half of silence in between each time we talk, wouldn't people eventually notice that? Or when I start to say something and then I get sidetracked by this guy that won't go the speed limit in front of me and all that, it, does that add character to the podcast? Or does it just make it, I don't know, less professional? I, and I can't even use the word professional because that's not us. It's just us talking about whatever comes into our heads. But I, I guess I just, it's tidier. It's, it's... I don't know. It, well, what do you think? Do you ever think, why, why did he edit that? Not usually. Usually you can tell that it needed to be done. And there are times when I'm like, why didn't he edit that? I'm, I'm cutting that out. Freak, I'm not putting that out there. Everybody will think I'm an a-hole. With female circumstances. <laughs> I don't know. I guess it depends on what you're going for, really. I think our main show needs to be as professional as it can be. Get to my goat, I think, can be less so. And then, yeah, podcast that dares not speak its name can be whatever the hell you want it to be, as the ankle cast can be. I mean, there was one portion where I just said, okay, hey, I'm not going to talk for a second, I'm going to put this down because I need to turn left here, and I also have to hold on to this drink. I didn't want to put myself in danger of crashing because I have done that recently. And, oh, you know, interestingly, I was getting gas the other day, and I was sitting there pumping gas, and then all of a sudden hear this, bang! And I look over, and the street, right in front of me, somebody rear-ended somebody else. Basically the same thing that I did with my van uh, last summer. So, you know what I did last summer. But your house was burning down. The entire town was burning down. I mean, hopefully that was an excuse that this other guy didn't have. Yeah, that's probably true. But the whole road was covered in ice right now, which I didn't have that excuse. So, you know, I'm sure there's, there's always excuses. What is the deal, man, with the freaking cold? Is it cold? It's probably not cold everywhere. Is it just our area, like western U.S., where it's just way colder than it usually is? Because, man, sucks. We could do a whole episode. Uh, that gets my goat on the go about the winter and how much I hate the winter. And that this is our winter of discontent. And that it was 8 degrees when I came and picked you up this morning. And now it's, oh, it's a sweltering 14. Woo! Yeah, and that's good. It's been much lower. The other night, wasn't it the other night when we got together and you took a picture of your thermometer on the car? Straight up zero, which it's not supposed to get that cold where we live. We don't live in a place that's that way. It's like you said, your, your, your uncle came in and said, damn, it's Alaska cold out there. Seriously, we only get cold like this probably once every four or five years, I would say. I hear you. I, I, you're from California and I moved here from California and I... I cease to want to do things. I, I don't want to go out. I don't want to get out of bed. My ambition, which is normally, you know, at a two, goes down to zero when the temperature does. <laughs> yeah, I had, a, I had a friend on Facebook the other day try and get after me for complaining about how cold it was. And this is the friend that lives in Los Angeles. And, oh, because it's Christmas time, he went to Canada to visit his wife's family. And so, oh, he knows all about the cold now, and I need to stop complaining. I bet you could make it around him. And he's just like, oh, there's a guy over there, too. Yeah, you probably have a hard time getting around him. The thing is, I have my cruise control on. You keep having so to turn it off. So I'm always going the same speed. And yet this guy is slower, and then he's faster, and then he's slower, yeah. and then he's faster. And yet he won't go over. I could have been past <laughs> him already. If he'd just pull out of the way. If this guy were just dead... My ambition would go up to a one right now, okay? <laughs> I don't know. A one is pretty high for you. <laughs> you know, that, I don't know how long we're supposed to make these things. We could talk a, a whole episode about ambition, and maybe we have. And we talked about, you know, things that we do to motivate ourselves. And what do you folks do to motivate yourself? And how long is your penis? You know, these questions that you ask from time to time. And there are entire podcasts that do that week after week after week. And they never seem... To run out of, of things to talk about. So, I guess it's fine to continue to talk about that, but um, originally we were going to talk about your New Year's resolutions. And oh, so, right. F it, let's just 
stop this. We'll do another episode, and we'll start with you telling what your New Year's resolutions are, okay? Okay, so yes, you've heard the uh, first Dune Steef on the go. <laughs> we complained about the traffic. That guy sped up, by the way. He's, he's kind of a ways ahead yeah, of you. He's going and, 90 because he knew I wanted to pass him. And you're going to catch up to him in a little bit and uh, rear end him again. But yeah, we uh, complained about the traffic and the cold and I guess introduced our recording format. Or I don't know. We may, we may have said something else of worth in there at some point. But uh, yeah, we're going to kill it now and start another episode that you will hear shortly after. It's Dune Steve on the go. Yeehaw. That Gets My Go is produced under Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives License. Sad but true. Okay, so there's one.